Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 69, Reservations and Spot Pricing. My name is Tim Warner. In the AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain, today's skill comes from the functional group Describe Azure Cost Management and Service Level Agreements. The objective is Describe Methods for Planning and Managing Costs, and our skill is Identify Factors That Can Reduce Costs, Particularly Reserved Instances and Spot Pricing. See the entire study guide and links to the videos by pointing your web browser to timw.info slash az900sg. Let's get to work. I mentioned reserved VM instances a couple times in the previous few lessons, and we finally now can formally define what this means. A reserved VM instance is a one to three year commitment or contract that you have with Microsoft where you're essentially prepaying for a particular size VM. Now notice the bullet point says multiple Azure products. Microsoft offers reservations for a number of products with virtual machines being only one. Mainly the other ones are in the data platform for databases. The idea here with a reservation is if you know that you'll be needing an Azure VM of a particular size for at least one to three years, you can realize up to a 72% runtime discount over pay-as-you-go prices. That's a pretty big discount. You pay for the reserved instance either up front or monthly, and Microsoft is nice about allowing you to renegotiate if you realize, well, I'm paying for too much compute. Could we split this into two smaller VM instances instead? Microsoft's really good about that. They don't play gotcha games with their terms, and I really respect them for that. The general use case here is that you're a business who has known and predictable usage patterns. You know you're going to be in the Azure cloud for a term, one to three years at least. You've done your due diligence and you've done your research, performance monitoring, tuning to figure out what size VM your workload needs. Then you would enter into a reservation commitment with Microsoft. Spot VMs take advantage of Microsoft's unused compute capacity. Think of, in your region, all of these rows and rows of server racks, all of this compute, some of which is bubbling right along with customer workloads. Other hardware may be quiet as a mouse. Microsoft wants to make a little bit of money back to recoup their hardware costs, so now we have this option of running your VM as a Spot instance. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means from a financial perspective, you can realize up to a 90% runtime discount on your VM compared to pay-as-you-go pricing. Wow, that's a huge discount. Is there a catch to this, you're probably wondering? With reservations, if there's a catch, I guess it would just be that you're on the hook for the term of the contract. But do spot VMs have a catch? They actually do, yes. I want you to be careful about using spot instances because they work on the basis of, as I said, unused compute. So what happens if Microsoft needs that compute that you're using for a spot VM and another customer comes along that's willing to pay full price to run their VM? Well, in that case, your spot instance may very well be evicted and you set an eviction policy for your spot VM either deallocate or delete. Deallocate means Microsoft will just unceremoniously stop and deallocate the VM when it needs to reclaim that compute for another customer and that's good if you realize that you do need the VM and maybe you want to take it out of being a spot VM and have it run on a standard tier or maybe you're fine with it being deallocated now and you'll just restart it up later. The other option, if this is truly an ephemeral or, or temporary use VM, you could set an eviction policy of delete, in which case the VM goes away when Microsoft needs to reclaim that compute. Long story short, what I suggest is that you use spot VMs for periodic workloads that are largely stateless, where it's okay if the work that the VM is doing were to get unceremoniously interrupted by being evicted. You don't want to use a spot VM for, say, a production web server that needs to be online 24 hours a day. You see what I mean? And I'll show you what's on the right side of the slide in my demo. So this is just a decoration here. <laughs> but you decide on your spot instance when you deploy the VM. And in so doing, you also specify your eviction properties. In this brief demonstration, we'll look at Azure VM reservations and spot instances. I'm in the Azure portal, of course, and if I do a search in the global search for reservations, there's actually a separate page for that. And if we click Add on the toolbar, we can see, as I told you a moment ago, that in addition to virtual machine reservations, you also can do prepaid discounts on a number of other Azure products. Particularly, I want to tie in our learning from a couple lessons back where we learned about Azure Dedicated Host. So a nice way to combine higher security, that would be the Dedicated Host option, 
with a significant runtime discount would be to combine dedicated host with a reservation. Pretty convenient, right? Well, let me select virtual machine from the list. And for completeness sake, I want to mention this last sentence here, which applies both to reservations as well as dedicated hosts, that the discount you receive from Microsoft is on the virtual hardware. The operating system is a separate charge. If it's Linux, chances are good it's free. If it's Windows, you're going to have to consider Windows Server, Windows 10 client licensing as well. That's not covered on the exam, though. That's just a real world bit I have for you. All right, so that's starting you down the path to reserved instances. Great. And I'll give Give you the links to the documentation at the end of this lesson as I normally do. Let me show you the spot. If we go to virtual machines and we start the virtual machine creation process, here we are in the create a virtual machine blade and the spot instance is actually right at the beginning of the process on the basic tab. Once you settle on a size, I'm going to grab this DS1 V2. You then can optionally make the virtual machine a spot instance by enabling this checkbox. And then in terms of eviction, we've got our eviction policy, which is just to stop and deallocate if you want to continue to use the VM in the future, or you can go ahead and have Azure automatically delete it. Now the eviction type is either capacity only or price or capacity. The default is capacity only, which means that if Azure needs that compute capacity for another customer, do not pass go, do not collect $200, that VM will be evicted using your policy. However, you can actually bid on how much money you're willing to pay for the virtual machine. And if another customer comes along who's willing to pay more than your maximum bid, then yes, you'll be evicted, but you have potentially a longer time frame where you can keep your VM in a spot state. When you choose price or capacity, it changes the interface down here. You specify a maximum price you want to pay per hour. And notice that it says enter a price greater than or equal to the hardware cost. The hardware cost given my size is only 1.2 pennies per hour. So I could say I'm actually willing to pay up to three cents an hour. So again, the idea with the bid here is that you can hang on to your spot instance for longer than if you just chose capacity only, which would mean that if any customer, even another customer who's wanting to do a spot instance were to come along, you're going to get evicted. But in this case, if another spot customer comes along and their maximum price was two cents an hour, I still can hold on to my spot instance. So again, the long story short is here for ephemeral workloads or for stateless workloads, you can realize a really nice discount on your VM runtime costs by enabling spot. Now, lastly, some points to keep in mind. Microsoft doesn't offer an availability service level agreement for Spot because, again, by its very nature, it's meant to be for an ephemeral workload. And lastly, you can enable Spot only during virtual machine creation. For example, you're looking now at another one of my VMs that I've been using for a long time, and it is not set for Spot. It runs at the D4 SV3 size. And if we come down in the settings, you can see that the Azure spot settings show NA for not applicable. In other words, you cannot convert an already deployed virtual machine to use Azure spot. For further learning, reserved VM instance documentation is at timw.info slash rsp1. Spot VM docs are at timw.info slash rsp2. Well, that's all there is to it. I've now completed the November 2020 updates. So that means unless Microsoft adds additional updates to the AZ900 objective domain, we're done. Congratulations. You can find me on Twitter at techtrainertim. My Pluralsight courses are at timw.info slash ps. My website is techtrainertim.com. I wish you all the best. I look forward to hearing of your AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals certification success. Take good care.